Yo, 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 what's up, family? Before we start the video, please leave a like, subscribe, and share to any and everyone that you can, just so we can get out there a little bit more. With that being said, let's get right into the video. Last night against the Indiana Pacers, the Celtics came out on top 129-124 in the game without big men Al Horford and Luke Cornette. This ultimately meant that Namias Kata would get some run in this game, and even though his stats showed a modest four points, he had two blocks and was the team leader in plus minus off the bench. In this video, I'll be showing the things he did well and some things he needs to improve on, but let's get right into the film. All right, so welcome welcome i want to welcome the cater tribe back and even if you aren't a part of cater tribe hopefully this shows you that he has some tools of course he has some things to work on but all in all i just want people to see that he is a piece that is worth developing and at least worth a roster spot right so so in this first clip we are blessed by our glorious king Derek white and on this possession, let's see how they got this mismatch. Obi Toppin is mis I mean, Peyton Pritchard is mismatched on Obi Toppin. Um, yeah, they just set a screen and Peyton just went right with him. But Jalen Smith is, he can shoot. He can stretch the floor a little bit, but he's not a great shooter. I'm not sure if he hit one tonight, but Kato was giving him um, some space, like forcing him to shoot the ball, then... Tyrese or Ben Shepard or Aaron e. Smith, who was really high in this game. Kato sees the mismatch does a nice job of getting up and getting a block. And then this is the exact same possession. As you see, there's only 4.7 left on the shot clock. He blocked the first one out of bounds. Then he comes here. He does a nice job again. This is something that I've been saying in, in the first two film sessions I did on Kata. Tyrese Halliburton is a dynamic pick and roll handler. Him, guys like Trey Young and Luca, they do a great job of on this pick and roll they do a nice job of having this defender in jail. Drew Holiday being here helps this a little bit, but in a situation where Holiday isn't here, a guy like Halliburton, Trae Young, or Luka, they do a great job of having this defender not knowing what they're gonna do next. Whether that's throwing the lob to the roller, or that's shooting the floater, or that's going straight to the rim, or shooting this mid-range, like, they do a great job of that. And Kata is long enough, he's athletic enough, and he's quick enough to sometimes deter the handler from throwing this lob to the roller and getting back in time to contest the shot. So this is exactly what he does here. He backs up on Jalen Smith just for a second. Halliburton makes his decision and there's not a lot of time left on the shot clock. And he comes back and he contests the shot and the Celtics get the rebound. Now, undoubtedly one of Kata's best qualities, if not his best quality, is his screening. He is a great screener. He gets people open. And this is very valuable on a team with Tatum, Brown, guys like Derek White and Drew Holiday who like to get the mismatch and who can take advantage of those more often than not. Aaron e. Smith is a good defender. He still can't check Tatum, but you would rather Jalen Smith guard him than Aaron e. Smith. Here, stoned. He's done. Aaron e. Smith is completely out of play. He didn't even try to get back. Aaron e. Smith is a hustler. He has energy. When he was with the Celtics, we called him crash because he would just fall over the floor. But... When all else fails, Aaron Neesmith is a guy that will have energy, and he will fight. There's nothing he can do with this. <laughs> Kata stoned him. And then the rest of his possessions is Tatum taking advantage of Jalen Smith on the perimeter. All right, so again here with the screen setting for Tatum. This one wasn't as good as the last one, but it gets Tatum enough space to take this three. Right here, see him hit, and Tatum had the pull-up going tonight, so he hit this one. All right, now to me, the biggest thing that he had a problem with in this game was defensive rebounding, right? He would get his hand on every defensive rebound, but he would just never corral it. That's for a couple of reasons, right? So here, positioning, you know, he's he's he has a body on Jalen Smith, but he's not really boxing him out. He's not moving Jalen Smith back. He turns, has Jalen Smith on him, but he's not he's not really do, he's not really doing anything until the ball goes in the air. And then the second thing is, he's going up with one hand. Even in the second clip when he challenged Halliburton's shot at the end of the shot clock, when they got the rebound, he tipped it up with one hand and Drew just happened to catch it. Sometimes that's cool, especially on the offensive rebounds, that's fine to like tap it out, you know what I'm saying? So you can try to get an easy three. But on the defensive boards, he needs to go up with two hands, right? And on some of these, he's off balance, I understand. But he's trying to shield Jalen Smith and go up with the other hand on a lot of these attempts and it just did not work out for him. And it resulted in a lot of second chance points. The Pacers killed us in second chance points in this game and it leads to Neesman nice 3. All right, here we go again. Shot goes up. He does a better job of engaging with uh, Jalen Smith and actually like boxing him out. He doesn't really go anywhere. But again, he doesn't do a good job of disengaging when the ball is in the air, right? He's on all these attempts. He's quicker off the floor than Jalen Smith. He's going to get his hand on the ball first, but he's not doing a good job of 
disengaging when the ball is in the air and going up with two hands. He goes up with one hand again, gets his hand on the ball, but again, Jalen Smith comes down with the ball after Kata tips it and it leads to another three. A very underrated part of his game is his passing, right? He's not the pass that Luke Cornette is. He's not the pass that Al or Porzingis is, right? But he's showing vision. He showed it in the previous game against the Pelicans. If you haven't seen that clip, I'll put it right here. I thought he was coming back in. Man, Luke decided not to. Oh, nice. So he gets fairly open here, right? Ben Shepard comes off of Sam Howes in the corner, which is absolutely dumb. But he gets away with it. But look at the pass, right? He catches it. Move one dribble, acts like he's going up, jump pass to Sam in the corner. Sam just misses the three. All right, I'm not gonna lie, when I saw this live, I thought it was a goaltending. I was expecting him to blow the whistle, but after seeing it again, you know, Kata does a nice job in the paint, right? He's a paint presence, right? And his activity is sometimes he's a little clumsy. And this is just like he does, he hasn't played in the NBA. He just literally needs more time to play. But something he can do on day one is protect the rim. And that's what he does here. All right, so I love this mentality by Katie. He sees a lane and he absolutely just goes for it, right? We've seen this in the Warriors game where he took, where he had the ball on the perimeter and he drove and he finished, right? But I don't want him to do this. Don't like, I understand you want to show off the touch a little bit. Go dunk this, bro. Or if you're not going to dunk it, don't do this. I mean, he's seven foot, right? This looks kind of easy and he's probably, he's probably done that move hella times and he's made it, right? But I want him to go towards the basket i don't want my seven footer doing that shit right go up go dunk the ball over him and he did that later in this game all right so this play is is actually just on tatum right they allocated so many eyes in the finish to tatum everybody's open right Derek white's open pretty open right beside him house is open but kata gets the dunk here and kata has athletic chops right he's doing pull-ups on the rim and shit and he's like swinging on the rim and shit like that he he has some bounce he has some spring right and just being able to use that and polishing it more with games play i think we will have something all right so if you watch the game live this is the moment you've been waiting for these two jump balls were the highlight of Kata's night so here you see the inexperience right he goes up against Hill in the jump ball he shouldn't even need to be this antsy he's gonna win it regardless but he wins it and he just gets it back right that is pure experience if anybody needs any indication that he has not played nba basketball or just games right he probably hasn't done this in college right i hope not this is just games played and it's probably him being so eager to just like try to make an impact or something but you cannot do this you can't do the jump ball and catch it right so that's one side of it all right so here he gets a second chance he gets a chance to redeem himself he wins the tip on Jalen smith Jalen Brown kind of taps it to him and he finishes super strong. And look at the bounce, right? He's flailing his legs. He got some springs. Like he's jumping like like he's clearly an athletic seven footer. Like he's moving, he's jumping like he got on springs. Hilled is asking for a hanging on a rim tech. Man, shut that shit up, man. So look, this is the perfect example of just learning of when I talk about Kata. It's a lot of it is inexperience. He just did he just did this. He did something wrong on this exact same situation. He learned from it and then he did this. You have to give guys a chance. If they show you that they have certain qualities that can be played in this league, you have to give them chance. Now, the Celtics do not have that luxury a lot of times. This is a team that is trying to win a championship. So the only time Kater will get time like this is if there's injuries. But you cannot take a guy out after one mistake right if he is egregious he makes a couple mistakes in a row that's fine but he literally did something wrong in this situation he got another opportunity and he fixed it and he dunked it and this was a really really good possession by kate on the defense side of the ball we have seen that he can slide his feet and he can hold his own on occasion on the perimeter right so all right so he's dropping back on the pick and roll against andrew nimhar who was killing them in the mid-range all night but they just continue to drop and here you see how he's he's quick on his feet, right? That's the Portuguese background, right? That's that's all that soccer he was playing when he was younger, right? So he's about to jump, but Jalen Smith drives, right? He stops mid closeout, like he's about to jump, but he stops, slides his feet, deters the drive by Jalen Smith, keeps his hand high, keeps his hand high. They pass the Obi Toppin, he drives, he comes off of that. A little contact, but Kata forces the miss. Now, again, above all else, Kata's activity 
it's worthy of him getting on the court. I've said a lot about him going up with one hand on the defensive rebounds and how the Pacers got a lot of second chance opportunities off that because he wasn't going up with two hands and securing the rebounds. But on all those plays, he got his hand on the ball, right? And on this one, this is the only time I can see him going up with one hand because he's literally getting boxed up by two people. And his activity gets a foul call here and he gets himself another possession. And once again here, Howler sets the pin down for K to come set the screen. And K to stops Siakam right in his tracks and Tatum gets a pull up three. But that's the video. If you enjoyed it, please again leave a like, subscribe, and share to any and everyone that you can. Just bring you out there a little bit more. And I will see you guys in the next video. But this is Nick. Peace.